All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome um, to the prayer call for entrepreneurs. I am standing in for the powerful Shaletta Fisher on this morning. Um, and you are still on here. If you want to pop out, you can. <laughs> hey, Troy. Hey, great morning. Great morning. Good to see you. Good to I love you. seeing your face on these morning prayer calls. I'm bringing some uh, more. Awesome. Yes. Okay, cool. And so um excited to be here with you guys on today. Yeah, I know we were on on Tuesday. I think God had me hidden on Tuesday to really get stuff out. Sometimes when you're on camera, what needs to be said don't come out the way it may be said when it's just audio. Um, oh, okay. I see you, Julie. So I'm gonna go ahead and make you a uh, co-host. And so um did y'all enjoy Tuesday? Yeah, I went back and listened to it a couple of times and it was funny because I saw somebody post about spiritual warfare, but in that conversation, something shook up for me because I think a lot of us might be encountering a, a crazy season. I don't wanna say crazy season, but a transitional season. Um, and sometimes when you're encountering transition, opposition comes right? When elevation is happening, you might have this level of like suppression trying to conquer. And so we have to be super mindful of what this gets to look like. And then we also have to be decisive on how we're going to approach, right? And so the goal is to get away from being emotional in our decision-making and being spiritually intelligent in our decision-making. And so I really want us to, um, if you guys have not listened to Tuesday, go and listen to the replay. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, and my YouTube channel is Nicole S. Cooper. Um, and yeah, and I just felt like God wanted me to just not be on camera on Tuesday so that I can get out of me. One of the things that um, on, on like Tuesday, my eyes was closed the whole time. So I told you, I wrote my book with my eyes closed. Um, and so a lot of times God can download because you're not distracted by what you want to say or what's going on around you or whatever. So if y'all find me closing my eyes when I'm talking to you, it's because I'm receiving the downloads that God has for us. Um, today, I want to encourage us in our obedience to the assignment that God has on our life. Um, I feel like God is pressing his people to step into roles of leadership, um, to step into roles of authority to take dominion, to walk in positions of power, and to do things that you feel you're not qualified for. You feel that you're intimidated by. You feel that are bigger than you. You feel that you don't know how and what and where to start with what it is that God has called you to do. And he's calling you to step out. He's calling you to show up. He's calling you to have a presence. He's calling you to take ownership of a space, of a room, um, to have dominion in specific areas, but you're dealing with a lot of mental, mental um, uh, battles about, but, 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 but what do I say? But what do I do? But if I'm not qualified, but I haven't had enough success yet, but I haven't made enough money yet, but I don't have this, but I don't have that. So many of you are called to step into higher roles in your life, but you're allowing the but to get in the way. You're allowing the but to get in the way. And you feel like if I could just do this one more thing, if I can just wait until I get this one thing done, if I can just go ahead and accomplish this one more, it's like, but, 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 and you're constantly in a state of delay. And so this morning, we're going to pray against delay. We're going to pray against distractions. We're going to pray against imposter syndrome. We're going to pray against that. We're also going to pray against the people in your circle trying to remind you of who you were. The people in your environment trying to tell you you're not qualified. The people that are trying to badger you about who you think you are, right? We're going to pray for God to remove the toxic relationships out of your life, to remove the naysayers out of your life, to disconnect you from the people that are becoming more of a burden 
in your life, then they are a blessing and a contribution to your life. To pray for you to be in the right rooms, in the right circles, so that you can be amongst the right conversations. To pray that you have access and reach to people that can help you elevate. Where Proverbs 18, 16 says, your gifts will make room for you and plant you before a great man, right? To pray and ask God for you to have a level of courage that even in the midst of it all not making sense, that you still walk in that anointing that God has placed upon your life to take ownership over the assignment on your life. I want you guys to understand how God works, and then we're going to get into prayer. And today we are going to pray against imposter syndrome, and we're going to pray for courage. And I want y'all to understand that you are smart enough, you are enough, you are worthy, you have what it takes. You know, you, you are not too old, it's not too late, you didn't miss the mark. Is there's no shoulda, coulda, woulda. You should have did this 10 years ago, 15 years ago, back when you could have did X, Y, and Z. God has assigned you for such a time as this. And one of the things that I, I personally have to deal with is letting go of the shame and the guilt of what I knew before, but I didn't do, right? Letting go of the shame and the guilt of the mistakes that I have made. Letting go of the shame and the guilt of whatever is attached to what was. Because I believe that a lot of us, especially women, those of us who are moms, right, we're wives, you know, we try to be super women. We want everybody to be okay. And we make ourselves last. We put ourselves last. And then we get further along. And then you start saying, oh, man, I wish I would have just done this then, right? And the reality is, is that God got you. God will restore he will redeem the time. He will allow you to walk in a spirit of total redemption, meaning that anything that he assigned for your life, you will still be able to retrieve it all and declare it all. And so in order for us to be fully in alignment with God's will, we have to be fully surrendered to his process. And his process means that we got to let go of our opinions about how God wants to work through us, about what he wants to do in, it, in us, how, he, how he's going to do it. <laughs> Y'all know that guy, what's his name? KB, who be on TikTok, who got all these crazy followers. And he just does this in his videos when he's like, that didn't make sense. Let me show you what makes sense. He just does this. But it's like, what understanding God's going to work it out. He's going to work it out. And so I know for me, I've been in a season of God saying, just trust me and move. Just do what I say. Stop asking me all these questions. Stop looking back at what was. Stop second guessing what's to be. Stop disqualifying yourself. Stop telling me why you can't do it. Stop telling me who said what. Stop looking to these other people who don't understand the assignment. Stop Walk, walking in guilt for things that you didn't know better on. Stop. It's like I'm constantly having God coach me. Every little move I make, I'm hearing God say, stop, stop worrying about that. Let that go. Stop focusing on this thing. Stop asking these questions. Just trust me. Just move. Like, just go forward into what I've assigned you to do. And so I want to, um, I'm going to um, go over a few scriptures with you guys. Um, so that you can be able to have something to reference uh, um, um, after the call. And so today I'm actually reading from my book, Praying Bold Prayers. If you don't have it yet, you do want to get a copy of this. Um, this is not just a promo. God literally used me to write this book. And this book is my personal prayers of where I have been in my life. And one of the prayers in here is on imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome, right? Um, one of the sad things about most of us is that everybody can see the gifts that we have that we can't see in ourselves. And when we, when we attempt to walk in it, we allow life circumstances to deter us. 
Um, so we have to, we talked about this on Tuesday, we have to get into a place in a state where we renew our mind, where we begin to see things differently, where we begin to meditate on God's word for the promises of who we say we are. And we get to, we get to have the mind in, in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. We get to have the Holy Spirit that is able to download and work through us directly from heaven so that God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven through us, right? We get to be the vessels that God used. We get to be the opportunities that God wants. Um, we get to be the people that walk in the opportunities where God can make miracles happen. Signs, wonders, and miracles will happen because of you. You are the sign, you are the wonder, and you are the person that God wants to work through to make miracles happen. So we are going to go over a few scriptures and then we're going to pray. Um, we're going to pray over imposter syndrome to remove imposter syndrome out of our life, to take ownership of God's will and purpose for our life. Um, and then we are also going to say some declarations about who we are in the Lord and what it is that God has promised us um, through his will, his purpose, and through his word, okay? So I am going to, um, I'm pulling up a couple of the declarations and I am pulling up a couple of the scriptures. I have some scriptures in here. Um, okay. All right, cool. So the scriptures for imposter syndrome, I'm going to go over a couple of them. So Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I'm going to repeat that. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So y'all listen to that scripture. So you are God's work. He put you together that he can work through you. He prepared you in advance. There's things that he prepared to do through you in advance um, that he has, he has already already assigned you to do. Um, Isaiah 64 and eight says, yet you Lord are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. He is working through us. If you read Psalms 139, I'm actually gonna pull up. This is something that you wanna read um, in its entirety. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And um, let me see. I'll pull up the whole thing. Psalms 139, 139. So it says, you have searched me, Lord. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. It says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. And then this is where it gets really juicy, right? This is where he tells you how he created you. It's at verse 13, 139, 13, 139, 13. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, 
Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. Listen to this. Your eyes saw my unformed body. <laughs> no, it's 139. Then it's 13. Yeah, 13. What Psalms 139, 13. Um, my frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake and I'm still with you. This is a scripture where he talks about he wove you together in your mother's womb, right? There's different versions of this, but reading Psalms 139, okay? Um, one more scripture, a couple more scriptures. Psalms 46, five says, God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. Now, ladies, y'all really need to put that man. You just change it. Y'all can say him, right? But God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Um, and so that's Psalms 46, five. What was the Isaiah scripture? Isaiah 64, eight. Yeah. Isaiah 43, one says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And then Luke 1, 45 says, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Ooh, Luke 1, 45. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her, okay? So I am going to, this morning, we're going to say a prayer over um, imposter syndrome, because here's the thing, you guys, God knows we are flawed. He just is looking for a yes. He's looking for vessels. He's looking for people who are willing, right? Which book was it? Chapter 64 or 5? 64, 5, I didn't say 64, 5. Um, it was Luke 1, 45. Luke 1, 45. And Isaiah 64, 8. Okay. Isaiah says, yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clan. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Yep. Luke 1, 45. And then Isaiah 64, 8. So here's, here's today is prayer over imposter syndrome. Um, it is the uh, ability to walk in what God has assigned for you to do. God has called us to rise up for such a time as this. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar. This is also, um, let me pull up. I'm looking up uh, the scripture. Um, this is, what is this one? Uh, where is this one at? There's one more scripture I want to share with you guys. And I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to find it. But it's talking about God pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, right, in the last days. So I am, I'm going to find it. It's here somewhere. Um. Let me find it real quick. Pour out a spirit. And that's what's happening. God is pouring out his spirit on us, right? Um, yep, Acts 2.17, is that it? Yeah, it says in the last days, this is Acts 2.17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams, right? Y'all can look around the world that is around us. God is pouring out his spirit on all people, right? Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. That means that God is speaking to us and through us, right? It's also in Joel 2.28, um, 
the, the same scripture is referenced in there, but we got to understand the times that we are in and what God is doing in and through us and why we have to walk in spiritual intelligence, right? Spiritual intelligence is the ab ability to remove yourself from your personal human emotion and instead be in alignment with the spirit of God to make decisions according to God's will and not your human nature, right? So it is the ability to remove yourself from being emotional about everything, right? Being so caught up in what you can and cannot do and instead walking in the fullness of what God desires to do in and through you. And so we're going to pray over emotion, um, pray over imposter syndrome today so that we can be obedient to God's will. Once again, this is in my book, Praying Bold Prayers. Um, you guys can get your copy. We'll I'll tell you more about that a little later. All right. So it says, Heavenly Father, I come before you in prayer against imposter syndrome and feelings of inadequacy. Lord, I know you created me to be here on this earth and you've designed, crafted, and brought me here on this earth for a divine reason. Lord, there are times where I know you are with me, but I still feel inadequate. <laughs> Excuse me. There are times where I struggle with not being qualified for a task that is before me. There are times that I feel like I'm not doing enough, smart enough, and not capable to take on the assignment that is before me. But Lord, I come to you now asking that you remove these ego-driven struggles out of my life. I repeat that. Lord, I come to you now asking that you remove these ego-driven struggles out of my life. Allow me to see that I'm in partnership with you and that you are the potter and I am the clay. And you have and will continue to shape and mold me however you see fit for me to fulfill your will and purpose for my life. Let me not live by man's standards, but let me focus on the task that you've placed before me. Help me, Lord, that I can focus on taking the necessary actions to live out the assignment. Help me to see the practical steps before me to follow so that we can move the mission forward and not get caught up in what man says or thinks. Your word teaches us that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart that the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Lord, you said you know the plans you have for me, plans to give me a future of hope and not of evil. Lord, you said that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by you, Lord. Lord, you said that I am your handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which you've prepared in advance for us to do. Lord, you've already orchestrated my life. You've equipped me with the gifts that I have for such a time as this. You've given me the gifts, skills, passions, and insight that I have for the things that light a fire under me. But Lord, in all that I have, I ask for wisdom. I ask for wisdom on how to use these gifts. I ask for wisdom on how I handle these gifts. I ask for wisdom with how I serve others with these gifts. Allow me to see God in everything I do. Allow me to experience this divine partnership where I know that it is you working through me to create the impact, produce results, and bring forth a profitable return through the work of my hands. Let me not walk in shame, fear, or play small with what you've given me, but let me operate boldly in these gifts, knowing that I am your masterpiece, carefully crafted and molded together with all the amazing qualities that you've gifted me with, and I am not to be in shame, fear, or intimidated about them. Instead, Lord, let me be the light in all situations where I honor, praise, and glorify you through the work that I do. That when people encounter working with me, they don't just see me performing a task, but they experience a shift in their lives. Let my life minister to others. Let what I do bring forth hope, restore people's faith, and produce such a level of success that it gets the attention of those that are hungry to experience you in their life. Let my life be an example and set a standard for what walking by faith looks like. Let my life represent the power of operating in your anointing when becoming a partner with you, Lord. Let my work exemplify the supernatural. Let me not be moved by ego, Lord, and let me not attempt to walk this journey alone. Yes, I want to continue to improve and invest in myself for growth, knowing that you encourage us in your word to rise early and work to earn our keep. Bless the work of my hands 100-fold, dear Lord. Let the work of my hands be um, produce such a profitable return that I'm able to build your kingdom and operate freely as an evangelist of what happens when you partner with God. Let me not grow weary in well-doing, but in all things be diligent that I complete whatever task that is placed before me in excellence. Let any praise, recognition, and accolades come as a shining light of the Christ in me and not just on me. Father, I want to be your partner. I want to be entrusted to operate fully as the mighty vessel that you have carefully crafted for such a time as this. 
I'm honored that you chose me to do this amazing work, to build others up with my gifts, to impact a nation of people, and to do it knowing that it's all done to glorify you. I rebuke imposter syndrome in the name of Jesus. I denounce any feelings of inferiority or unworthiness in the name of Jesus. I declare that anything the enemy attempts to sow as a seed of doubt be cast down into the lake of fire in the name of Jesus. Quench the fiery darts of the enemy, Lord, and allow me to operate fully in the victory that has already been granted through you, where you've already blessed everything that I do. I surrender these prayers in your precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. Man, one of the things that I um, am excited about with this book is that when you go through and you read the prayer, because that's the prayer against imposter syndrome, we also have, have affirmations and declarations. So I'm going to read a couple of the affirmations and the declarations, okay? It says, I am worthy of the gifts that God has planted within me, and the world is waiting to experience these gifts. My unique approach to what I do is wanted, needed, and God has gifted them to me to deliver them to the earth as a gift for this very exact moment in time. God specifically chose me to carry this gift that I have with the work that I do. He is proud of me for investing in myself, mastering my craft, growing my gifts, uh, growing in my gifts, and it brings him pure joy to see me use my gifts and share them with the world. I am called by God to do what I do. And everything that I do, I am in partnership with God, which means we already have the victory. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fully equipped to operate in my giftings freely without shame, but instead I shall operate in the spirit of boldness because what I do, who I am, and all that I accomplish is designed to glorify God. I am honored that God chose me to do what I do. Therefore, I will walk, work diligently with a smile on my face, and the spirit of expectation that others will be blessed from the work that I bring to the earth. I am honored to possess the gifts, skills, talents, and passion that I have. I rise in them knowing that I was uniquely designed to bring them forth to the world. I will invest in growing in the gifts that God has given me, and I will have joy in my heart with a feeling of gratefulness that I get to do what I do and impact the nation of people with the work of my hands. When I walk in a room to perform my work, the room brightens up into vibrant energy that brings forth a radiance and joy to others. Lord, help me to remain humble and level-headed, giving you the praise, knowing that anything that I accomplish, any success that I experience, any lives that are transformed as a result of the work that I do is all done because of the power of the Holy Spirit working through me. I am called by God, chosen by God, and gifted by God. Therefore, I proudly own the gifts that God has granted me. That is the prayer, y'all, for um, to overcome imposter syndrome. And one of the things that I, I want to share with you guys um, about, about just little simple strategies and things that you can do, because I'm going to just be honest, y'all, like it has been so many battles for me over here. Like I, I can literally feel me trying to swim upstream and what God has called me to do. Any little thing that could try to come as opposition to discourage me, to distract me, to detour me. I mean, it is working over time to try to discourage me. And the challenge is this. When you're in this journey to walk in God's will, it is a very lonely road. You don't have the ability to call a lot of people. You can't often tell people how you really feel or what you're going through. Um, you know, it, it can feel very like isolating. And if we don't have the ability to like put our prayer in words and to go before God or to even understand what the scriptures say about this journey, it's very easy to give up, right? But when you start renewing your mind with the word of God, with the things of God, with um, the promises of God, right? It's always going to feel crazy because what God says is often very opposite of your current circumstances and what you're dealing with, but that's where faith comes in and you have to exercise your faith and you have to ask God, Lord, expose to me what steps I need to take, what strategy I need to implement in this current season, this current experience, like what, how do I navigate through this thing? And then you walk in the godly wisdom that God gives you, which you'll be in a complete opposite of your human intellect. Our human minds are only going to function according to what we see. Our spiritual intelligence allows us to see what God sees. 
So the Bible tells us that the mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus, right? And then in 1 Corinthians 2, it talks about what man knows the things of God except the mind of God. Like, you know, who knows the things of God except the mind of God? And the only way that we can understand the things of God is that they are spiritually discerned. That means that we're able to tap into the spirit of how God is moving and we're able to be connected to the way that God operates through the Holy Spirit. But the only way you can really be discerning and understanding how the Holy Spirit works is if you read your word, if you if you meditate on the scriptures, if you begin to to meditate on God's word day and night, and then you also continue to listen auditory, right? So there's multiple ways that we learn. We learn by what we see, we learn by what we hear, right? We learn by what we read. You wanna get yourself in a position where you're constantly sowing God's word in your ear. So even when all hell is breaking loose, even when I am unraveling, I'm always playing something around me that's speaking the word of God. Last night, it was so much going on. Michael Todd was on right? Um, the minute I get up in the morning, Apostle Joshua Selman is on. I'm always listening to the prayers of Apostle Joshua Selman, the declarations that he speaks, you know, and, and the different, just different forms of like sowing this in my ear so that whatever my mind is trying to conjure up in opposition to what God says, I'm listening to something that is reminding me of what God says that will help me to get away from my human nature of thinking and help me to see what God says in the spirit realm so that I can begin to wash my mind with the word of God, renewing, that's the renewing of your mind. You want to be brainwashed. You literally have to brainwash yourself with the word of God. So I am listening to different things that are speaking to me what God says so that whatever my mind is trying to conjure up as a storyline, Whatever my mind is wanting to create, whatever people are trying to infiltrate into my ears and say, God ain't going to do nothing for you. You ain't ready for that. You ain't got this. You never did that. You don't know what you're doing. You're not qualified for that. You don't did it. You can't, you can't, you can't. All the things that are trying to tell me what I can't do. I'm constantly renewing my mind by listening to something that is telling me what God says. I'm constantly watching a sermon or something that is planting the scriptures before me to remind me of what the word says, introducing me to new scriptures that I've never read before and teaching me concepts and principles about the word of God that I never knew about, right? So we have to renew our mind daily. That's why the Bible says you got to protect your eye gate and your ear gate, right? Because what happens is whatever we feed ourselves, I, I um, uh, saw Creed 3 the other day, right? Creed 3 was really, really good. If you have not seen it, you need to go and see it. And it was probably one of my favorite creeds because um, the storyline, I don't want to mess it up, but the motivation behind the storyline just made it an amazing movie. But it was obviously it's about boxing. And I always shared a story about my mentor many years ago when, when I was deep into my hip hop and West Coast rap music and all that stuff and was in ministry at the same time. Um, I always share the story. This is back in college when Columbia House was a thing. You can get 12 CDs for one cent, right? Y'all remember that. So I used to want to collect all these CDs and um, all my different music. And so I remember asking him, how did I know scripture? Like he would always fire off all these scriptures. The word says this and the word says that. And I was like so mesmerized by that. I was like, how do you know what the word says? Like, how do you remember all these scriptures and how can you fire them off on all these different topics? And he was like, it's because I study and I meditate on the word. And I was like, but what does that mean? Like, to me, I was real, like, naive. I didn't understand any of that stuff, right? And so he explained to me, he said, Nick, it's about what you feed yourself. So he explained to me, he said, if you put a black dog and a white dog in a boxing ring, who's going to win? And I was like, I don't know, the black dog, the white dog, I don't know. Like, how am I supposed to know, right? He was like, it depends on what you feed them. He said, if you don't feed the black dog for two weeks and the white dog just ate steak and the white dog has been running and training and all the things, when the white dog gets into the ring, it's going to demolish the black dog because it came in prepared to win. He said, that's how our spirit works. He said, if you're feeding your spirit the word of God and the things of God, it will conquer. He said, but if you're feeding it other things like Tupac and Vicky Smalls and Snoop Dogg and all the things, 
that's what's going to conquer. So when you're trying to, when you're trying to study the word of God, but you're feeding off of Tupac all day long, Tupac will overpower what you're trying to learn about the things of God. And you'll be rehearsing Tupac more than you are speaking the word of God. You won't be able to master the scriptures. And so I was like, oh, okay. So what do you mean by that? So he was like, he gave me a test. He said, I want you to let go of that music for a season. And he said, instead, if you want to listen to certain music, get you some Kirk Franklin, right? This is back when Kirk Franklin and Stump was out and all that stuff. And he was like, get you some gospel music and replace your listening day in and day out with gospel music while you're reading the word of God. So that now these, the word can, it can, that seed can be able to develop in you. And so he showed me the scripture in Matthew. If you read the um, scripture in Matthew about the seed that actually um, falls, right? So there was a, a it talks about, um, and I have to find it. Y'all know I love to reference scriptures. Um, let me see. The seed falling on stony ground, the parable. Matthew 20, Matthew 13, 20 through 22. Um, oh no, it goes back further. Let me see. Um, it goes back. Yeah, so it's Matthew. Y'all got to go read this, right? Because it, it goes into um, detail. Um, but it's Matthew 13. And it talks about seeds that are sown. Let me see. It's not going to show me the whole thing. But it talks about when the seeds fell, some fell on stony ground, some fell on rocky ground. Um, let me pull it up. I got a reference scripture. I don't want to just be winging it. Okay, so it says, um, this is Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. It says, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him. and He got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And then the disciples asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? And he said, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has, um, whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. But here's the thing. So when you think about things falling on stony ground, some fell amongst the thorns or whatever, that's how the word is that comes to us, right? So for example, y'all get up in the mornings, Y'all get on these prayer calls. Y'all listen to what we got to say. Oh, that was good. Praise God. Amen. Some of you start getting dressed and you start listening to the radio or you start turning on your favorite song or your favorite music from your favorite artist that ain't got nothing to do with gospel. Whatever you got this morning is now being smothered and choked out by whatever you feed yourself right after these calls because it didn't have time to take root. It didn't have time for you to meditate on what's being shared. Instead, you are allowing yourself to meditate on what that music has to say. So it doesn't matter that you spent 30, 45 minutes getting on this call and hearing something inspiring because immediately you put yourself in a vulnerable position for that, whatever was sold into you, it didn't have time to take root. So it immediately gets swiped out from whatever you listen to that works against what we're talking about. So that music or whatever, especially if you listen and I listen to some, I see some of the stuff people listen to and I'm like, good God, how do y'all even let this music fall into your ears? Like not happening over here, right? So whatever you open yourself up to immediately after these calls, after prayer or whatever, it has the ability to swipe it out if you're not meditating on something that will nurture it. But if you put on gospel music, if you put on a sermon, if you begin to speak declarations and affirmations from the word of God over what just happened, you're allowing what's being shared to take root. And that gives you an opportunity now for God's word to become life in you. 
because you're watering and nurturing the seeds that were just sown. Unfortunately, very few people outside of church don't so that don't don't water those seeds that are sown. So you go to church, great message, super inspirational, but you walk out the door, you forget it, and you open yourself up, as we talked about this on Tuesday, as prey to whatever the world want to throw at you, and you start meditating on that. And so your the word doesn't get a chance to take root. So that's why you have to watch your eye gate and your ear gate and protect what it is that you're listening to, because whatever you listen, whatever you give your ear to, whatever you give your eyes to is going to take root in you and it's going to sow seeds into soil that will reap a harvest of whatever you're nurturing within you. So if you're constantly listening to music that is whatever, that does not nurture what the things of God is going to work against you. When you be praying and asking God for stuff, but you turn that music on and you bang into it and it's good and whatever, whatever that is, it's, it's, it's just like the, the, this Bible say, it's like the thorns that come and eat up those seeds. So that's why the conversations you have, the things that you meditate on, the people who you give access to you, man, that stuff is so important because otherwise it will begin to choke out what God, the seeds that were, were sown in you. And then you're wondering like, man, I'm praying and I'm getting on these prayer calls and you know, I'm reading the word. I don't understand why things are not working in my favor. Well, what are you opening yourself up to that is taking that seed and actually um, putting it amongst thorny grounds where it's just getting eaten up? So we have to be mindful. So my prayer for you guys today is that y'all meditate on the word of God. Like, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, y'all. Like I'm telling y'all lately, I feel like I feel I can just tell that the enemy is like, I feel like I'm such a threat. <laughs> Sounds arrogant, but I'm like, I must be a serious threat to the gates of hell because the level of opposition that has been coming my way, right? But I will, I will continue to meditate on God's word. I will continue to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I will continue to speak life and have expectations for God to do the things he said he's going to do. I will continue to listen to these sermons. I will continue to speak life over myself. I will continue to have great expectations for God's promises to be fulfilled. I will continue to write in my journal and create declarations over the circumstances. I will do all those things. And so I pray that you guys are, I don't want this to just be where you being inspired because we praying. No, you're going to have to learn to pray for yourself. You're going to have to learn to read the word for yourself. You're going to have to learn to study scripture for yourself. You're going to have to learn to meditate on God's word daily. You're going to have to learn to keep feeding yourself things that are going to continue to build you up. And if you don't, this is the result. Matthew 13, go and read it. That's, that's the parable that God gave as an example on how to nurture what God gives you versus being vulnerable to letting other things steal the seeds that are sown in you that God wants to sow, okay? So I hope that this is beneficial to you guys. I hope that this was helpful. Um, this recording will be up on YouTube and um, you guys can share it with other people. And then we will be back here on Tuesday. If y'all want, have not gotten the book yet, um, let me see, I gotta turn this. Um, if you want the book, you can order it at um, bizismyministry.com, B-I-Z is my ministry.com. And um, we also have affirmation cards now, right? So this is where you get the cards and um, these are on the way. We're still waiting for, we just, we had a, a bundle come and they already were sold out. So we got more on the way, should be here any day now. Um, but these affirmation cards are supporting the, the different affirmations that um that we put in the book so this one is like i have clarity over every area of my life and then we have the um the the we have declarations here and then we have the affirmations on the back where you can speak and this one says my mind is clear my thoughts are aligned the spirit of the living god is upon me and the mind of Christ is within me. Today, I have clarity over every area of my life and I know exactly what I am to focus on today. No distraction, outside influence or weapon formed that attempts to come my way shall prosper. I have the victory, right? We talked about this on Thursday, the irony of that. And then we have scriptures there, right? So there's more. This one is I'm worthy of success, blessings and abundant opportunities pursue me daily. Everything that God has for me meets me where I am exactly when I need it. Abundance, prosperity and wealth is in my bloodline and I don't have to toil for it. 
Okay. Um, so you can order your affirmation cards. I will say be patient with us. We are waiting for a huge shipment to come in. Um, and so they're on the way, but you place your order because they are selling out fast. Um, the last batch we just got was gone the first day they got here. They were gone in an hour package and shipped out the door, right? So we have more. I am filled with the wisdom from the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. Like there's so many. And what's pretty cool about this that I love um, is that they have this little stand that when you get them, you can have that as your word for the day and you can put it like on your table somewhere so that you're meditating on it. That when you begin to have those moments of doubt, and seeds start trying to be sown in opposition to work against you, you can look this over and just start meditating. And remember, you got to brainwash yourself, okay? You have to brainwash yourself. So you can get this at businessmyministry.com. Um, we also have the journal that is coming, businessmyministry.com. So you should be able to um, get a hold of that. Yep, so the affirmation cards are there. You have the book is there and then the journal so that you can even get the bundle of all of them at bizismyministry.com. B-I-Z is my ministry.com. And y'all, I'm already working on the second and the third book. The next book is Praying Bold Prayers Over My Finances. Yes, so we're going to talk about money, about getting your finances in order, about improving your credit about creating a spending plan, about understanding investments, about changing, transforming your mind from a scarcity mindset to an abundant mindset, to understanding the promises of God and the things of God, to being a good steward, to being able to sow, being a giver, a cheerful giver, right? So there's so many different things over our finances that we're going to pray and understanding that blessing shall overtake you no matter what the economy is. So even when we're in a recession, being able to walk in the fullness of God's promises, no matter what the economy says. So we will have pre-sales for that up within the next month or so for y'all to order. The book will take a couple of months to be complete, but that is the next book series. And it's going to have both affirmation cards and a journal and a book. Every one of them will come with a series of things. So the next one is praying bold prayers over my finances to walk in the promises and the abundance of wealth that your father has made you an ear to the throne to. So that is it for today, y'all. I don't think I have any announcements, um, but if you um, have any questions or whatever, y'all can DM me and we will see you guys on Tuesday. Today is Thursday. On Tuesday, same time, 6 a.m. Um, for prayer. So share it with a friend, let some folks know, and we will see y'all on Tuesday. Y'all have a great and awesome day, y'all. Bye-bye.